Today's video is actually talking about the Ciro 50mm f1.8 anamorphic lens and I'm actually shooting the entire video with the lens as well. While I'm talking about the lens, I may not have it in my hand, but I will be sure to overlay lots of video for you to see what it is I'm talking about. The lens itself is very nicely built. It's got a good weight to it. Everybody I, I gave this lens to to test out to kind of feel felt it was a lot heavier than they thought it would be for a lens of its size. So good job, Ciro, it's really well made. The lens has two rings on it, one for manually focusing, as this is a manual focus lens, it's not an autofocus lens, and the other ring is for your aperture, and it's a de-clicked aperture ring. So this is a 50mm f1.8 anamorphic lens for Sony. They do also make a Fuji mount and they also make a micro four thirds mount. A quick lesson on anamorphic for those who aren't aware. You would have seen lots of movies that have these crazy flares in them, like this. And it's a look that a lot of people really like. It's very sci-fi-esque. That is often a result of using an anamorphic lens. The other reason that people would use an anamorphic lens is they just want a really, really wide shot, a really super cinematic style shot, and that came from Hollywood. Hollywood introduced anamorphic lenses to get people back into the movies to have an experience that they can't really replicate at home. So those huge wide shots, anamorphic lenses. The way an anamorphic lens works is actually a lot simpler than it seems. All you're doing basically, all the lens is doing is squeezing more into the frame and then when it comes to edit and post, you de-squeeze that back out and it just gives you a much wider image than what you typically normally have. So in the case of the Ciro lens, it's a 50mm lens, but when you put it into post, de-squeeze it back out, it's the APS-C equivalent of a 37.5mm lens. And who doesn't like wider? Bigger is always better. Something to be aware of when you're shooting with this lens, as it's squeezing a lot into your shot, if you were to look through the EVF or at the LCD screen, everything's gonna look very squished and it's really hard to compose your shot and sometimes even check what is in focus, as this is a manual focus lens. That's kind of important. So what I would suggest doing is actually using a monitor. A lot of monitors have a function built in to de-squeeze it so you can view it live de-squeezed as it's happening. I use field world monitors and they actually have a de-squeeze option built directly into them and it de-squeezes at a rate of 1.3x, which worked perfect for the Ciro lens. This just allows you to actually compose your shots properly and as I said, see what's actually in focus because when it's squeezed up, it's really hard to tell and you wanna make sure you have really nice video and not have to go out and shoot it again. So always use a monitor if you can. When it comes to editing, your workflow does have to change a little bit. I actually use Final Cut because I like to be able to edit for more than two minutes without hovering above Command and S. But if you want to torture yourself and use Premiere Pro, you can pretty much apply these same settings to Premiere Pro too. So to be able to get the widest possible video and edit with this video properly, you're going to want to set your custom resolution to 5107 by 2160. When you put your video directly into this timeline, you're going to see it's still a bit squished up. Obviously, we have to de-squeeze it still. So what you do then is head across to the inspector. Go to your X scale, which is your horizontal axis, and change it from 100% to 133%. That's gonna go from squishing the video in the middle to completely filling the frame, and now it looks really good and anamorphic -y. Is that a word? Probably not, but I'm gonna use it. And honestly, it's as simple as that. You just do that with all the clips that you import. You could add an adjustment layer to do it to all the clips if you wanna do it that way too both would work. So now I'm gonna show you some video shot directly with this lens. If you subscribe to me, you may have already seen some of this video before. Obviously this whole video today was shot with the anamorphic lens, but you wanna see some actual real world examples too. So here is that now.
Anamorphic lenses typically aren't cheap. You could easily spend $10,000, $15,000 on an anamorphic lens and that might even be used. So this lens is actually quite a big deal because I think right now it's in early bird stage on Indiegogo and it's $599 US. When it launches properly, it'll be $699, but even then it's still much cheaper than any other comparative lens out there. So if you are looking to get in that really nice anamorphic style look or you wanna shoot a film in anamorphic, and you don't have a ton of money, this might be a pretty good option for you. So there we go, that is the Siru 50mm f1.8. There's a link down below, as I said, if you wanna pick this lens up. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching today. You can click some buttons down below if you wanna subscribe and like and that stuff. That's that, I will see you guys in the next video. See you later. And just because they look cool, here's some more flares for you.